you can imagine, after the haul out, I was a little tired from all the work and once I got back in the water it was nice just to relax. I finished up the uh, videos for the haul out series and uploaded them for you and uh, then I just took a little break. But over the last couple days I've been working on some more video from that time up in the hard and that is for the head systems upgrade part two. Now I have to apologize in advance here. The video is not going to be the greatest because I was so busy working on the boat. So this part of the project while I was on the hard uh, replacing the three through hulls and valves and toilet, it's not a big job but it had to be done while I was on the hard obviously and something I've been wanting to do for a while. As you probably guessed from the uh, part 10, I think it was, in the Hollow series. Uh, I wasn't super happy with some of the things that uh, happened for this part of the project, which was the leaky through hull. Well, that wasn't the only uh, issue. And I guess the big lesson that I've learned is that, you know what, if I want something done right, I should just do it myself. Because I paid a lot of money to have this part of the project done. And it was definitely not done to the standard that I expected. Well, I don't want to bore you too much with uh, talking, so let's take a look at what was replaced and uh, some of the issues or concerns and uh, how those were resolved. So for part two of the holding tank slash head project. I'm going to re be replacing this toilet, the through hull and valve for the sink in the head is being replaced and here you can see it's quite old and has a plastic elbow on it which is not good. The through hull and valve for the water intake for the head is also being replaced and this old valve weeped a little when it was open and then it started weeping a little when it was open or closed so I wrapped it to stop the weeping but then I couldn't use it anymore and it also has a plastic elbow on it which is not good either and here is the one and a half inch uh, direct discharge overboard for the head and although it has a newer valve on it I'm gonna replace that anyways the handle's a bit rusted and it's a bit loose for having a little play in it when I uh, have opened or closed it. So just going to replace the through hull and valve for this as well. I think I can reuse the elbow that you see at the top there. The through hull for the sink drain and the water intake came out quite easily, but the one and a half inch for the direct overboard uh, discharge, it was being a little more difficult. So here's a large threaded rod with a big washer at the bottom there. And I'll show you how this is set up on the outside. And this is going to assist uh, getting this through hull out. So on the outside here you can see a piece of tubing that is larger than the through hull. And it's pressed up against the hull. And just as the nut there is tightened, it slowly pulls that through hull out because there's the washer on the inside that you saw and it does it in a nice controlled manner and once it's loose enough you can just wiggle it right out when we pulled this off the other day we realized that this whole area here is countersunk so here you can see the screw holes have been filled with epoxy and sanded down so those holes are completely filled because I won't be needing them for the new through hulls. That's on the one and a half inch. This is the water intake and he's done the same thing here. He's filled this all with epoxy. And the last one for the sink drain in the head. Uh, there were two more screw holes here so he's filled these and like I say it goes right through to the other side so I wanted to be sure those were filled and uh, the epoxy was cured properly before we set the uh, or bed the actual through holes in here. 
So here is the toilet that will be installed hopefully today. Let's take a quick look at the new toilet. Very exciting. So this unit is a Jabsco. They have two sizes. The size I have is the larger of the two bowls. And it, it was just the closest in size for what the existing toilet was. There's a smaller one, I guess, for maybe a boats under 30 foot range. And it's all mounted quite nicely. Once the toilet was installed and hooked up, uh, to the holding tank anyways at this point. I put some blue treated water in it and I wanted to flush it into the holding tank to make sure there was no leaks uh, where the hoses were attached. You can see where the black hose is and just in front of it there's two bolts uh, holding a separate piece of the toilet uh, that is attached to the black hose and those were completely loose and water was spraying out everywhere so I was a little disappointed that this wasn't even uh, checked by the mechanic and made sure that uh, everything was working fine before he left. Here's a quick look at the new through hull and valve for the sink drain. Here's the new through hull valve and elbow for the water intake for the head and the direct uh, overboard discharge is all finished as well. And here's just another angle. So here we are on the outside of the hull, taking a closer look at the flush mounted through hulls. And the countersunk area was actually larger than the new through hulls. So there was a little bit of a gap. And I had actually told the mechanic to just bed the through hulls properly. And I was going to fill the gap with epoxy and you can see that he didn't do that and he decided to fill or at least try to fill it with the Sikaflex 291 which is not what I wanted because now I wasn't able to put the epoxy in and uh, have a nice smooth finish like you can see on one of the drains at the back of the boat. This is the look I was hoping to get and the finish I was expecting to get. And we all remember this moment when I was put back in the water and found the leaky through hull and had to spend an extra night out uh, on the hard in the slings. So here's the reason why I am not in the water. This new through hull was dribbling water. So the mechanic came back to the boat and pulled the valve off because that's where I could see the water dribbling from. And he resealed it and put it all back together with a faster cure sealant so that I would be ready to go back in the water the next day. When you're paying someone uh, to do a job, I really had expected a better finish. Uh, I was disappointed on the outside with how it was all filled with the Sikaflex and then taking a closer look on the inside it's just as bad. It's just a huge mess. So after being in the water for a couple days I decided it's time to clean up the holding tank area and I noticed if you look at the bottom left corner there is a hose clamp that's not even there anymore. So this was really disappointing because if I was to do a job that involved removing hose clamps, I would make sure that all the hose clamps were put back on. Here's the hose for the sink in the head going down to the new uh, valve and through hull. And you can see that it's actually too long. This hose should have been cut down so that it wasn't bowed out like that. The first thing I noticed when I opened the door was this hose is sticking way out to the left now and at the connection you can see that there's only one hose clamp on and there should be two hose clamps on this 
I've just realized it's very tight in the head, and it's not going to be easy to film this, but if you remember on the first video, I used the hot water to heat the ends of, of the hose, and this time I'm going to use a heat gun. My vote would be using a heat gun over the hot water method. Of course, if you're at anchor and you don't have access to power, then the hot water method still worked. It was just a little bit slower and not quite as effective as this, but I don't always have power when I'm sailing, so in a pinch uh, you could boil a pot of water and still do it, which is nice to know. So it's good to have options. So I'll uh, undo the clamps and then I'm going to heat up the hose with the heat gun and remove it. Of course I closed the valve first, uh, important thing to do before you start pulling off hoses. That should be good and warm to get on there. Okay, here's the new piece of hose, cut to the right length, it's got a C-clamp on the top, and two on the bottom like it should have had. So that's it, the head systems upgrade is finished, both parts, and I know I wasn't really able to focus on that so much with the boat guy whenever he was coming and going and doing the haul out videos. And, uh, of course, the highest priority was actually doing the work. So, I hope the video sort of showed uh, enough for the second part of the head systems upgrade. It's not really a big, complicated job. It was just a, the three through hulls and uh, replacing the toilet, really. Anyways, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And... It's raining out, so I think I'm going to turn on the fireplace and maybe uh, find a, a good movie to watch. I'm a bit tired after a few weeks of working hard every day and then going to work and working after work. And so I'm looking forward to just relaxing a bit. It's about uh, a week after I put the boat back in the water that I'm recording this right now. And I know I still have... Uh, Lots to do, get the boat ready for cruising, but I enjoy working on the boat. I've got lots of winches to service now that James has shown me how to do the servicing on the winches. So I'm very excited about that, and that will be the next video that I'm going to upload, is uh, the next Variant 28 winch on the starboard side. So we'll see you guys on the next video.